Howdy, Aaron Gloucester here with the Ohio Health MS Center, speaking to you today about multiple sclerosis and the MRI. This video is focused on MRI basics. What is the MRI machine? How does it work? How does it help us in multiple sclerosis? And what are other basic concepts that let us understand what's going on when we have one of these scans? All of that and more will be covered in this video, starting right now. Number one, what is an MRI? MRI stands for Magnetic Resonance Imaging. Essentially, it's a really big magnet that allows us to take awesome pictures of fat and water. Now, this works out super well when you're imaging the central nervous system, the brain, spinal cord, optic nerves, because those structures are made up of different kinds of fats of different densities and lots of water, which results in great pictures and a lot of information in the setting of multiple sclerosis. Now, let's address how does it work? How does the MRI machine actually take a picture? I mentioned earlier that it's a giant magnet. Now, the magnet can send out a pulse of radio waves when you turn it on. And when that pulse of radio waves hits the brain, it causes some of the protons floating around in free water to become excited and they stand at attention. Then when you turn that radio pulse off, the protons relax. Different tissues relax at different rates. And so a tissue that's predominantly fat may relax slower than a tissue that's predominantly water. And these different relaxation rates result in different kinds of pictures. This is how the MRI machine takes a picture. It's important to point out from a safety standpoint that there are no uh, x-rays and no radiation used, uh, no iodine given. Uh, it, this is taking a picture literally with a powerful magnet. A word about contrast. Gadolinium is a contrast agent, which is oftentimes given partway through the MRI uh, procedure. The patient will be taken out of the gantry, and then in the, in the vein, they inject this dye. The dye is a chelating agent. It binds to big molecules found inside the blood vessels, and so it stays trapped in the blood vessels. Essentially, the dye allows us to light up the blood vessels and allows us to see them. Because of the blood-brain barrier, the dye can't leak out of the blood vessel unless there is new uh, active activity. Uh, a new lesion in the brain will irritate the blood-brain barrier. This allows the dye to temporarily leak out of the blood vessel into the brain tissue, showing a contrast-enhancing lesion. Now we turn our attention to some uh, important MRI basics. The first thing I want to talk about is the strength of the scanner. Scanner strength is measured by units of Tesla. It's my opinion that when imaging a brain or spinal cord with multiple sclerosis in mind, we need to at minimum use a 1.5 Tesla scanner. Even better is a 3 Tesla scanner. I think it's important to avoid scanners less than 1.5. And I particularly would shy away from these 0.7 Tesla open MRIs. The picture quality is way too low. The next focus is on the slice thickness. When you take an MRI, you're taking a picture of several millimeters of tissue and you turn it into one image that you look at in two dimensions. When you're imaging with MS in mind in the brain, I recommend cuts that are three millimeters thick or less or thinner. I would not recommend cuts thicker than three millimeters. Pay particular caution because sometimes Scanners will try to get really thick cuts like six and a half millimeters, and that's way, way, way too big. The next thing to look at is the gap between the slices. So you take a slice of tissue, and then there'll be a gap sometimes. You don't want a gap, not with MS. Ideally, you want images with no gap. Be careful because sometimes you'll see one, two, two and a half millimeter gaps, and that means that you're missing a tremendous amount of brain. Lastly, we'll talk about the different sequences. When you're in the scanner and you hear the different noises, bing, 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 bang, 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 those different noises are different kinds of pictures. In the setting of MS, the sequences that are most helpful are an axial flare image, a axial T2, a sagittal flare, a T1 axial pre-contrast, in a T1 axial post contrast. There we have it, some basics about MRI. 
Once again, my name is Aaron Boster and thanks for tuning in. Today we talked about multiple sclerosis and the MRI, reviewing some important basics of what it is, how it works, and things that you want to know about to understand your scan. Take care. If you like this video and would like to see more content like it, please subscribe to the channel below, hit the notifications, and don't forget to leave your comments and questions below. Have a great day.